My God, we just got robbed. <laughs> April 15th, Baker Street. See, that's why I ain't grown ups. All they do is feed you a pack of lies and take stuff away from you. Oh, really, Miss Lestrade? Tell me, is that overcoat keeping you warm? What? Oh my, surely you were getting that. Yeah, the deed didn't let me keep it after I took look daggers at him long enough. It went through the pockets and then said go on, then have it, before telling me to scarpa. Always play us off giving people a look like you ate them. I can't help feeling that it's gonna get you in serious trouble one day. What I really wanted was that nice shiny disc of mine. The music box disc? Mr. Windybank said it was practically worthless. I think I'm gonna go and have another bash and give him a long odd stare. I think not, Miss Lestrade. We shan't enter Windy Bakes again today. Why not? That's not fair. Can't help. You can't be helped, I'm afraid. Police are investigating the scene now and taking a statement from Mr. Windy Bank. But the disc mine. I had the ticket for this coat and it was in the coat's pocket. There should be something else at all. That's what the Ron Cove said, ain't it? Yes, he did mention something about another article, didn't he? But then, that's mine too, whatever it is. Now she's really pushing her luck. Miss Lestrade, Miss Lestrade, I think it's time to admit defeat. You have your haul for the day. Yeah, and it's all your fault, Shums. So what are your plans now? Will you dine with us this evening? Eh? Iris would be delighted to cook, I'm sure, and I might entertain, her, entertain you with a modest violin recital. Not, uh... Oh! Well, when I come around your place, eh? I've heard you lost your mind or something. Oh, she gone. Oh dear, she's gone. Hmm, having relive, having re reviled for me unquite necessarily, I might add. I can't help wondering. If perhaps she might turn up anyway. Interesting. When she had a chance to calm down, I think there's not a chance she'll decide to come. Very well then. I'll inform Iris to set a place for our potential guest at the dinner table this evening. And one more thing. It should be glad of your company, too. Sorry? I believe I will have a rear rather splendid surprise to show you. Oh, how exciting. What is it? You shall have to wait and see, Miss Susto. Until later, then. All right. <sighs> April 15th, 3.46 p.m. Shulm Suite. Bum 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 Garbage theme song and it's a war crime. Ah, Susie and Runo, come in, come in. Good afternoon, Iris. Thank you so much for breakfast this morning. Oh, don't mention it. Goodness, look at the time already. Busy as always? 
I am, and I'm preparing everything for dinner this evening. Alrighty, you're obviously cooking something special, aren't you? Oh yes, after all, we have a special guest joining us. Guess who it is? Go on, hee hee, you'll never guess. Um, look at those little eyes of her shining. Oh dear, it's awkward when you already know the answer, isn't it? It's Kitty, isn't that exciting? Oh, what a surprise! Yes, that's wonderful news! Wow, Iris seems overjoyed at the idea. I can't wait to learn some pickpocketing tips from a real professional. Oh yes, that does sound fun. I'm not sure that's entirely appropriate, are you, Mr. Arhoto? Uh, by the way, Iris, uh, what's Mr. Sholmes up to? Early? Oh, he's been like that ever since he got back. Hello, Mr. Sholmes? Beg that you don't speak to me. Sorry? I don't know who you are, but kindly take your leave. As you can see, I'm not here. Uh, I don't know how to respond to that. I do apologize. When he gets like this, he's completely oblivious to everything. Yeah, I, I see. <laughs> really? He behaves like such a child sometimes. Hartley does. The Sholmes and Iris have something of a parent-child relationship, don't they? Yeah, except that Iris is clearly the parent here. <laughs> I'm to think of it. I wonder where her real parents are. What's the matter, Runo? You have ever such a funny look on your face. Oh, no, it's, uh, nothing? I know what it is. Why does this girl live here with Mr. Sholmes, you're wondering? Am I right? Ow, oh, how did you... Hehe! <laughs> oh, Runo, I can read you like a book. Ah, uh, this girl's dangerous. Don't worry, you can ask me anything. I won't mind. I don't want to talk to you, though. <laughs> so, uh, by Guinea, you mean Miss Lestrade, the young woman from the McGilded case two months ago, right? Yes, who also stole my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Although, after the trial, I invited her back here and we had dinner together. And now we're the best of friends. Oh, <laughs> what a lovely tale. Yes, now if I bump into her on the street, she runs away as fast as she can. Oh. <laughs> and I chase after her down the back alleys. Interesting idea of friendship. <laughs> and then I let her have the latest color with a U, by the way, of smoke grenade I've de developed. Oh. Iris, you're, you're, you're English. You're, not, you're supposed to not mention that you have a U. I will destroy you, Suzuto. <laughs> There are so many beautiful colors in the world. Guinea wants to make a whole rainbow. I suppose this means you let Miss Lestrade keep the smoke grenade launcher, have you? Yes, that's right. I got bored of it anyways. Hurley always reacted the same when I shot him with it now. Poor Hurley. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for Guinea to arrive. It's been so long since she last came over. I'm so excited. I just hope she does actually come. I'm sure you've been wondering what it's like to live here with Hurley, aren't you? Haven't you? Oh, it has it has crossed my mind that and where are your real parents? My mommy and daddy aren't with me anymore. Alright, this just got serious. <laughs> the music stopped. The bad music stopped. That means something's happening. Mommy passed away when I was born, and around the same time, my father, well, he had to go to a faraway land because of one of the cases he and Hurley were working on. Oh. Wait a minute. Did you say 
Ian Hurley? Yes! Daddy and Hurley were always solving mystery cases together. You didn't mention that before. He wrote them all up in his diaries. That's what's in the metal chest over there. Really? He recorded them all? So, you mean it's true, Mr. Sholmes? Billy did have a partner with whom he tackled some of his most taxing cases? Oh yes, I mean, it's always nice to have one, isn't it? Hey, I say yes, yeah, like you! Mr. Shum's partner was your father. Exactly. He really told me I wasn't allowed to look at the chest. But there's only made me want to look even more. So I opened it up. And found your father's memoirs. Yes, so I asked Curly. Who wrote these? He nearly fell out of his chair. But then he told me that's when I found out that the author of all those accounts was my father. Iris' father was Mr. Sholmes' partner. I practically lived with Hurley all my life. It was tiny when he took me in. So, it came as quite a shock. When Hurley told me he wasn't really my daddy, I mean. I must, it must have done. I wonder why Mr. Sholmes chose to tell you, and at such a young age. Hurley says it's because he wouldn't have been able to hide it from me. Oh? Well, having lived with Hurley all these years, you might say that his ways, he has, his ways have rubbed off on me. There are some things I can't just see. Especially lies. I almost know when people are lying before they open their mouths sometimes. Perceive? Hello? Right. Anyway, it was so fascinating when I read Daddy's Diaries. That's what inspired me to write The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, actually. I always assume Mr. Sholmes simply told you all those thrilling stories. Oh no, Hurley's hopeless like that. He forgot everything. As soon as he solved the case, it's but van it all but vanishes in his mind. Oh, I see. The other day, it was so embarrassing. As usual, he totally forgot about the case he just solved. But the very next day, he gathered together all the people involved and proceeded to solve the case again. It's quite a shock for everyone. And say that again. <laughs> You share your father's surname, don't you, Iris? That's right, Wilson. That is Dr. J. H. Wilson. Uh, we got bad news, doll. <laughs> I learned from his diary that he's a doctor of medicine, you see? That's what prompted me to study and study so that I can earn a doctorate as well. Iris's father went to some distant land. He's a doctor by the name of John H. Wilson. The court will now hear the trial of Rinosuke Naruto. Kindly stay before the court the name of the victim in this case. The victim's name was... John... Dr. John H. Wilson? That's right, visiting professor of medicine at Imperial Yumi Yume Academy. And then the guy who, in the most bizarre circumstances, lost his life just before we left Japan. Miss Suzuto. Yes? Perhaps we shouldn't pursue this conversation any further at this time. I think that would be for the best. Ah, my dear Phyllis, how good to see you. Eh, Mr. Sholmes. Wherever did you not make your presence known to me before? Ha. Huh. Well, no matter now. Oh, yeah, ha, ha. So, how the devil are you? We've been with you for most of the day. <laughs> Goodness, really? You tell me, Mr. Sholmes, is your violin unscathed? Hmm? My violin? Whatever are you talking about, dear madam? Oh, um... Never mind that now. I have something far more interesting to show you. Behold, 
My dear Phillips. Oh, another music box disc. No, not another disc, Miss Suzuta. This is the one Gregson demanded. We had him for his evidence. Mr. McGilded's disc. Oh my! And then, what is it doing here? <laughs> you know, at times, Mr. Naruhoto, I think that though I have an undeniable turn for detection, ooh -hee, ha -ha, I may be very well more adept at larceny. <laughs> oh, that would be wonderfully exciting. I'll be pick I'll be your pickpocketing assistant. And Riddle could be our go-to lawyer if we ever get caught. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> right. <laughs> Plus, Susie can have such beautiful handwriting, she can write all of our menacing crime notifications. Yes, it'll be delighted. I'll be delighted. I'm just gonna pretend that this conversation uh, never happened, I think. I do not understand. Oh, I, I, I don't understand. How did this disc come to you be in your possession? Uh, Inspector Grenson took it back to Scotland Yard. Quite correct. And that sort of uncompromising attitude is precisely why I always carry some of these. That's a, a bar of chocolate, Mr. Shomes. You're our one and only friend in this time of loneliness, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> if you will humor me, my dear fellows, cast your minds back to when the good detective confiscated the disc. I'll be taking this whenever it is for Mr. McGilda down to the yard. Thank you very much. So hand it over. Oh, uh, yes, of course. If the police demand something as evidence, my dear fellow, we have no choice but to capitulate. Capitulate. It's all yours, Inspector. For the brightest of moments, I had the disc in my hand, did I not? Yes, yeah, you did, but no, I still don't understand. It was at the precisely that moment that I summoned my one and only friend into action. I pressed the disc into a pair of bars, like this. That's amazing. The disc and all of the minuscule protrusions have made an image on the caramel. Indeed, this caramel is quite exceptional. I developed it myself, you know. Suitably soft for made impressions, but resistant to melting, this result of a precisely controlled solution. How extraordinary! Carrying a pair of these on one's person frequently proves more useful, indeed. Take a house key, for example. A simple press in its unique form is duplicated. I can enter anyone's property at will, and not without, and never without high or gross nourishment. Yeah, it sounds uh, illegal. <laughs> From the image, I was able to create this. I confess, I was most curious to know what manner of music would, would issue with the disc when played. You tell us then, Mr. Sholmes, what music does this disc play? Well, unfortunately, I have no idea. No idea? None whatsoever. Are you familiar with the workings of a music box, my dear fellow? No, I'm afraid not. Goodness, you don't know Bruni? Bruno? Inside a music box, there's a special metal piece called a comb. This is what, this is what produces the sound. All protuberances... Protuberances pluck the different teeth of the comb as they rotate past it, making the sound different noise notes. The first music box to be invented used a rotating cylinder with protuberances on it. But over time, a new type of player was produced, which uses discs such as these. With that development, the popularity of music boxes spread far and wide, all around the globe. Why? Why exactly? Because the discs are easy to produce and can be interchanged to facilitate the playing of different tunes. There are a great many firms in Europe now manufacturing music boxes as a result. 
It is wonderful to be able to enjoy music, even when no performer is present. But it is the very success of the invention that means we are now presented with an insurmountable problem. What do you mean? As you may imagine, the construction of one firm music box does not match that of another. And we have no way of knowing in which music box this particular disc was designed to be played. There is no resolution to this problem, I'm afraid. It's quite intertraceable. I see, so that's why. Naturally, I tested the disc in this fear of few box music boxes I have at my disposal. But as you can hear, to no avail. The result were equally unsatisfactory in this one. So, I am presently engaged in acquiring an example of all of the music boxes ever made in Europe. E every single one? That's early for you, always taking things too far. But my dear girl, an unsolved riddle is quite repugnant to my constitution. Surely all the different types in Europe will amount to a huge amount of music boxes, won't it? Mm, yes, that is certainly true. In the worst case. I shall just have to ask you to vacate the attic room. What? Oh, I'm drinking water. Drinking water. Magnus McGillan. Not a name I expected to hear again so soon. Yeah, it's only been a two months since the Grizzly case. Mr. McGill did perish within hours of the trial's conclusion. Is it the curse of the Reaper? No one knows. Till now. The omnibus was reduced to a pile of ash, not a single shred of evidence remained. And with the man's death. The problem with that murder in which he was so intimately involved was buried. Even though we successfully established Mr. McGilded's innocence in the trial, the newspaper are still claiming that it remains an unsolved case. Murder of the brickmaker, Mr. Thrice Fired Mason. In the end, the truth of the matter remained a mystery. We still have no idea what really happened that night. I mean, yeah, we do. He fucking murdered him. Like, we don't believe this guy, right? He's he's innocent. He's he's guilty of sin, bro. And though Mr. Gill was found not guilty through my defense, uh, one he didn't deserve, by the way. I still don't know if that was the right to judgment or not. It wasn't. I don't have to be a mastermind or a fucking English major to know that he's guilty. It would appear this case is not yet closed. Well, it's time I started getting things ready for dinner, I think. And it will be here before long. Thank you, Iris. Oh, well, you must let me help you then. Of course, Susie, there's plenty to do. I think I shall investigate the conditions of my faithful performing partner. Now then, where do I leave it? Where did I leave it? Let this be a lesson to you, Mrs. Strums. Never leave anything too precious with the prawn broker. Hmm, yes, you may be right. 
Oh, that reminds me of something Mr. Windybake said before. He said that he had a manuscript of viruses in pawn, didn't he? Did he? Yeah, he definitely mentioned it. Mr. Shum's latest tale of otherworldly mystery lies dormant in my storeroom, where his words, I believe. You heard about that, didn't you? I expect you were as incensed as I was. Oh, yes! The idea of such a wonderful story languished in Mr. Winnipeg's storeroom, gathering dust? My dear madam, I'm quite sure I told you already. The pawn broker storeroom is the safest place for it, more secure than a bank's vault. And what about your Strandev Stradivarius, Harley? Was that safe and secure? Well, there may be the occasional mix-up. Caused by a certain imp imputerist someone not too far away from me now. You have any idea how long it took me to write that Baskerville story, Harley? Oh, it sounds so exciting. The Hound of the Baskervilles. I would love to read it. How the f Wait. How do you know that name? <laughs> Wait, oh no. <laughs> oh no, I've never seen I've never seen her like so serious before. Wait a minute. I think you made a mistake. 